Blackout, and it's like 10 p.m. <laughs> Biggest blackout in San Diego history. And we're living it. All right, listen to the radio. KOGO San Diego simulcasting tonight on our other Clear Channel radio stations, KMYI San Diego, KGB San Diego, KLSD San Diego, KHTS FM El Cajon San Diego, KIOZ San Diego, and KOSS San Diego. We're bringing you live continuous coverage of the big blackout of this date, September 8, 2011. Uh, not a day that many of us will soon forget, considering what is still going on out there. An eerie, creepy night in some areas of the county. In other areas of the county, they're cheering and applauding as lights have come back on. Uh, let's go to uh, Rebecca out of Spring Valley as we await the next update from the uh, county. Rebecca, where are you? I am actually in El Cajon. Oh, okay. Well, El Cajon's good. Spring Valley. All right. I was you, talking to them. This is the window. Cajon. You can't see uh, anything. It's pitch fun, black. In El Cajon, they're still dark? Oh, yeah. It's dark out here, but it's gorgeous. Gorgeous in what way? The stars and the moon. It's just amazing. So how you guys at your house been just entertaining yourself? What have you been doing? Um, pretty much just sitting around outside. It's nice. Yeah, you know, it's just cooled down a little bit tonight? Oh, yeah, it's nice outside, finally. That's good. The heat it's wave awesome. is broken, and that's, you know, it was expected, today was expected to be the last day of this heat wave, and none yeah. of us expected to be uh, in the dark all night tonight what with the power outage. But, you know, it's great. You and many, many other people across the county uh, are, are looking at this as an opportunity to really kind of relax and spend some time together and, you know, maybe cuddle up a little bit together, whatever. You know, it's kind of nice. Yeah, it is. And who knows, maybe it'll be like that big New York City outage years ago, you know, where nine months later, a bunch of babies are born. We'll, we'll have to track that nine months from tonight. <laughs> hey, listen, yeah, thanks for checking in. Cool. Yeah, I appreciate you checking in from Rebecca, from Sp uh, El Cajon, Rebecca, I really do, and letting us know what's happening in Spring Valley as well. Our phone number, 800-600-5646, 800-600-5646. Let's go live now to the county uh, office. County Emergency Services will be for an update. Tomorrow, as scheduled. Uh, our plan is to provide county services to the public as normal tomorrow, and you may want to call ahead to make... You can't see anything, and it's barely 10. No lights out. Thank you, Bill. Good evening, Good evening everyone. Uh, the restoration process has started, as we indicated there's a, earlier. It's there goes the car. It's a slow process, but we're seeing... Uh, pockets of customers being restored in about uh, 12 or 13 different communities already. We're seeing some lights starting to come back on in Laguna Niguel, Laguna Hills, Mission Viejo, San Clemente, San Pasqual, Escondido, Benita, Otay uh, Mesa, Rancho del Rey, Carlsbad, Oceanside, North Island, and National City. Again, these are our areas that are starting to come back. Uh, we have nine substations, uh, which is our electrical distribution point uh, for distribution to customers uh, that have partial restoration at this point in time. We have about 115 substations throughout our system. Uh, we have 37 different specific circuits that connect to our customers that have been re-energized uh, either fully or partially. We have over 900 of those uh, altogether, so we have a ways to go, but we're starting to see uh, a bit of progress right now. We've dispatched uh, some emergency generators to several hospitals, uh, some water districts uh, as well, and so uh, that is happening as we speak. And uh, one of the things that we are also doing and working very closely with the county on is uh, uh, looking at our life support customers and life support residents throughout the county. Uh, very important that we have contact with them. Uh, so working with the county, we have cross-referenced our lists of those customers, and uh, we are calling those customers and making sure that they're okay. Uh, if those customers do not uh, answer their phone or we cannot get in touch with them, we are going door-to-door -to, -door to knock on their door to just make sure uh, that they're okay. So that's happening right now, and I think that's a very good sign uh, as we continue progress. Uh, since the last update, uh, there was an indication that uh, the initiating event for this major system disturbance uh, throughout the southwest uh, did happen as uh, a, an employee initiated event in Arizona. 
Uh, that was uh, confirmed by Arizona Public Service, and that was the beginning uh, of the event uh, that has affected so many people in San Diego, <laughs> the radio music. Uh, Orange County, Imperial County, uh, Baja California as well. Um, the system itself is starting to come back in, in pieces. We have our, our major transmission line uh, has restored power down from San Clemente down through uh, the Carlsbad plant and down to the center of, uh, towards Mission Valley. That is the backbone system, so we now have to take that backbone system and work that down to our substations. We also have a connection in from the east, which is our 500,000 volt line, into the area near Chula Vista. So we're starting to see some pockets of restoration uh, in those areas as well. I think uh, overall, uh, we had talked about the fact that we would see some customers coming back by midnight tonight, which we are seeing, which is very fortunate. Uh, we have to make sure that we continue this restoration process throughout all of tomorrow, possibly into the next day, but hopefully we'll get uh, most people back sometime tomorrow. Uh, our power plants are starting to uh, come back online. Uh, they're going through the methodical process of startup uh, to ensure that they're ready to go and then be connected to the grid, and that will help us in our restoration uh, efforts uh, as we continue to uh, uh, put more power onto the grid. Uh, we'd just like to, to also re reiterate for all of our customers, tomorrow, please conserve. It is very important that we continue to conserve throughout San Diego County as the power grid is in a uh, lessened condition and we get some of our power plants back, but not all of them. The San Onofre plant probably won't be back for a couple of days, so we want to make sure we're conserving. Also, I'd like to also urge all of our customers to make sure you turn off your, your air conditioner right now if you're out of power. Uh, uh, because when the power comes back on, uh, we end up with a big surge. You can turn your air conditioning back on five or ten minutes after uh, after the power comes San Diego before with a complete blackout of the system uh, and unfortunately caused by uh, an event in another state, but uh, we're going to work through it. We thank you for your, your patience and uh, look forward to getting you back in service as soon as possible. Where are people going right now? All right. Thank you, Mike. Um, as many of you uh, continue through the night without power, uh, safety is a priority for us. Uh, we can't reiterate it enough. Reiterate it enough. Please extinguish the candles if you're using them. Uh, turn off your air conditioners, as was Mike just asked you to do, um, and stay off the road unless you absolutely uh, need to be out there. Uh, now we're going to hear from uh, Mayor Jerry Sanders. Uh, thank you. Just a couple of updates, and I'll repeat a little Attacks bit. Uh, because of the outage, two of the city's sewage pump stations have failed. Uh, pump station 64 in Rancho Peñasquitas is currently spilling sewage into the Las Peñasquitas Lagoon. Uh, it should go without saying that people should avoid the lagoon until we have more information regarding the extent of the contamination. Also, pump station number one stopped working earlier tonight, and as a result, some sewage leaked into the Sweetwater River. However, pad, uh, power is gradually returning to the station, and that leakage has stopped. Uh, we're advising people that you avoid not just the river, but also the nearby San Diego Bay, at least in the southern section. Uh, we're working with the county to post warning signs in both of those areas. As I mentioned earlier, uh, we brought in additional firefighters to staff ambulances. My phone's about to die, and I have no way to uh, charge it. Police department, Great. Uh, has additional officers out on the street. 911 lines are fully operational, and we have traffic control officers out working at major intersections. Uh, you can go to our city CAPS line, 619-570-1070, uh, uh, talk to a live body on the other end to ask any questions that you may have, and they can update you on anything going on. And then finally, we have several water pump stations that have also lost power, so we've issued uh, precautionary boil water notices for the following areas. Scripps Miramar, Tierra Santa, San Carlos, La Jolla, Bernardo Heights, Scripps Ranch, Otay Mesa, and Redwood Village, which is near the college area. As for service, we do plan on picking up trash tomorrow. Also, the city will be open for business tomorrow, so all city employees should report to work as usual uh, in the morning. And lastly, the airport authority has asked me to report that all outbound flights have been canceled for this evening and some morning flights have been canceled. They're advising that you check with your airlines for more information. Thank you. Uh, next, we're going to hear from the uh, County Superintendent of Schools, uh, Dr. Redden Ward. 
As you've heard, there's uh, some communities that ha have perhaps some schools that are up and partial of the partial um, of the district in place. But we still believe that uh, because we can't guarantee that all schools will be uh, ready and up and running tomorrow morning, that all schools will be closed. All public schools in the county of San Diego, from. Borrego Springs to Chula Vista to I just saw fireworks. Coronado and certainly San Diego Unified School District. What the uh, hell is up with these people? Uh, parents' patience and the inconvenience that uh, this causes. Being a parent myself, believe me, I know. I prefer to send my child, my six and eight year old, to school, uh, but I would rather err on that uh, cautionary note. Uh, one more time. Tomorrow is not a business as usual day for bike riding and skateboarding. There's a different atmosphere on our streets. Please be careful, and certainly be careful to make sure you extinguish all of your uh, candles or anything that's inflammatory in your children's room, whether they like it or not. Uh, you can't risk their lives because they don't like the dark. Thank you. Uh, we ask you to please be patient as we resume normal activities. Uh, we ask you to use 911 only for life-threatening emergencies. Um, it, uh, 911 is up and operating, but we don't want to overload the lines. Uh, for non-emergency calls, you can dial 211. Uh, our emergency operations center will be operating throughout the night to ensure that we're on top of this situation and nothing else arises. Uh, we will provide updated information as new facts become available. Um, and please stay tuned to your local radio station for updated information uh, if you do not have the, the power. Um, and the county is also regularly updating our, our Twitter and Facebook pages on this emergency, so you can use it. I know many of your cell phones uh, may need to be recharged and you don't have electricity for that. Many of you yep. can recharge your phones in your vehicles, um, and we just ask you to stay on top of that. Um, with that. Um, we will not meet at 3.30 in the morning. Uh, I, I, oh, I want to mention that North County Transit at 2 this morning will make making a decision on the trains. Um, if, if the coaster and the Sprinter train are not operating tomorrow, um, they will have um, a, a bus replacement at the, located at the stations uh, if you need to move, use uh, the rail lines uh, to take you to your destination. Um, and for the latest information, as I mentioned, you can go to uh, goinctv.com, and they're updating that uh, as they make their decisions. Uh, I know I just talked to North County Transit. Their power is back on in Oceanside, um, everything above Mission. Um, there's security systems there, so we'll, they're going to decide at 2 this morning whether or not they can operate the Sprinter and the coaster. So uh, with that... Uh, Yes, sir. Mr. Bigley, please talk about exactly what happened again. I know we talked about it again, we talked about it again, and what power might be back up for. Wow, somebody's. Somebody's battery just died. <laughs> Their battery and then died so that they didn't turn on the car. Wow. Anyway. Uh, the United States on the electric power grid, that disturbance resulted in some low voltages and fluctuating voltages in various parts of the, of the grid itself. Uh, all of the electrical facilities are affected differently by this. Uh, one of the impacts was that the San Onofre nuclear power station uh, uh, operated to protect itself from any low voltages and disconnected from the system. Uh, that took uh, 2,200 megawatts of power off the grid instantaneously, uh, which created sort of a cascading effect that um, uh, resulted in a blackout here in San Diego and Orange Counties, uh, in Baja, California, uh, in Imperial Irrigation District, and some other scattered areas. So we ended up with a major uh, system disturbance that uh, uh, occurred 
and resulted in that major outage. Um, and since that time, we've continued to work on the restoration plans. Sounds like this was purely operator error. I'm sorry? Sounds like this was purely operator error. Was, was there any system components that failed, or was it simply a person who did the wrong thing? You know, I, uh, the, the initial instance of this looked like it's an operator error that happened in Arizona, and that started the series of events. Uh, what we'll have to find out through the investigation as we review this uh, with uh, federal agencies, state agencies, is to find out was there any other complicating factors along the way, any other equipment that failed that uh, contributed to the outage as well. So there's going to be a, a, a deep uh, review of this particular issue, but clearly the initiating event was an operator error. How is it possible that one person could make a mistake that would take out the power from more than 3 million people? And what kinds of safeguards did you have in place that either failed you or were there even any there? Uh, there's, there's a lot of safeguards in the system, and the system works as an, in an interconnected basis. And uh, when you have uh, high power demands that are going through the system with the kind of temperatures and, and the situation we had uh, uh, today, uh, and you have an upset on the system, in this case, uh, what appears to be a very solid uh, short circuit that was on a system that was carrying a lot of power, it will reverberate throughout the system. And I suspect as we go through the investigation on this, you'll, you will see that there were some other elements that played into it uh, that maybe didn't operate exactly like they should and allowed it to cascade a bit. And, of course, this started over in Arizona, so we're going to be working with uh, the folks at the uh, California Inde Independent System Operator, uh, APS, Arizona and the Public power Service, back on. and other companies. The power is Arizona. back on in San Diego. Um, Look at that. The power so is back on. An we have power. We have power. Stop. Damn, people are going crazy outside honking their horns. Show! Damn, people honking their horns outside going crazy. Did we start it since it was turned off? Good night. Damn, people yelling lights are on. We have lights. Let's go. You! The lights are on! <laughs> What's up? The, not a, they were just talking about how uh, all neighborhoods are getting lights back on and stuff. And like, I, I was just listening to the radio on the window because I'm filming. I, I've been filming for like 18 minutes now. Oh, and like, I, I was just listening to the radio on the window, and then all of a sudden I heard my TV go. Blink! I know. I was like, what the hell? I was like, hey. I was like, oh, we got light. <laughs> <laughs> hey, did you hear the people honking their horns and stuff? Hey, what's the something about Arizona and. Oh yeah, the 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 main power outage was in Arizona. So what's gonna like what's gonna happen with them? Nothing. Someone's gonna get fired. Oh, okay. Why was it? Someone did the wrong thing. Oh. They don't know what it is though yet. I'm trying to cover up. I need to charge my phone. Yeah, well, that's what I'm All right then. Wait. That is sick. I was filming the moment when it turned on. Time to charge my phone and watch TV. Oh, snap. They stopped the cop. Wow, there's only light on one side of the block. Really? There's only light on one side of the block. This side has light and that side doesn't. I swear.
Edward and Coco, and our other Clear Channel stations as well. Once again, the bullet point highlights of that news briefing. All public schools are closed tomorrow. All Catholic schools are closed tomorrow. Many, if not most, private schools are closed tomorrow. We just got the latest word in from a couple of uh, private schools, Lutheran High, Pilgrim Lutheran School. Uh, what else here? Um, a, lot, a lot of schools. The Grower School and Encinitas huh? all closed tomorrow. Uh, the west side of my street has light, and the left side and the east side doesn't. Wow. Schools in the county: SDSU, UCSD, USD also cancel classes tomorrow. Grossmont College, Eumacna College. So obviously, it's going to be a very unusual Friday tomorrow, as it has been even more unusual Thursday so far today. And it's not over yet, as thousands, hundreds of thousands of uh, sdg &E customers remain without power after 1.4 million customers the entire... You hear that? Even the crickets are happy that we have light. Through the night, and uh, we do, and sdg &E expects more and more neighborhoods and areas of the county to uh, see their lights and power come back on through the night and into tomorrow. For continuing coverage uh, of the blackout today, stay tuned to AM600 COGO for updates for the rest of the night and through the night as we return to our normal programming on our FM stations at Extra Sports 1360. We'll continue at the top of every hour and at half past the every hour through the night on our Clear Channel stations, KMYI, KGB, Channel 933, Rock 105, and KOSS Country, as well as AM 1560. TV's back on. All right, then later.